Hello everyone, and welcome back to our series on flyouts. Today, of course, we're taking a look at turbo props, which a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you just go do jet engines like everybody else does? Nah, that's too easy. I want to make things complicated. So for this, you're not familiar with what a turbo prop is. Uh, basically, you take a gas turbine, uh, you put a gearbox on and chuck a propeller on the front of it. That's the uh, oversimplified version, but it's basically what we're going to be creating today. So I'm going to go and press my plus button. I'm going to go head up to my power. I'm going to grab myself a turbine. Now, when you look at this, of course, you're going to say, oh, you just got yourself a jet engine. I thought we were doing turboprops here. Ah, uh, relax, relax. We'll get it. I'm going to go ahead and grab this thing. I'm going to drag it a little bit higher here to make it a little bit simpler for us. Go ahead and hit that shift key. And now we're going to go ahead and get this thing ready to go. So this is, of course, going to be my PT-6, which is a pretty good little turbine here. Keep it nice and simple. Now, in order to make something into a regular gas turbine, good old-fashioned fast, there's a couple of different options we're going to have to set here. One, of course, we have the diameter of the turbine, which is going to be kind of the overall diameter. Theoretically, this should be intake diameter, but again, they can probably change that later. We're also going to be interested in what kind of fan we're going to use. Now, there's no reason in the universe to put a high bypass fan on a turboprop, because remember, it's not the gas turbine that's going to be producing thrust here. It's going to be the actual energy we capture from the turbine that's going to be doing the work. So I'm actually going to set fan to no, because I don't need a fan here. Now, going down here, uh, we have our different combustor. Annular is generally your best. If you're trying to copy a specific type, of course, you can pick it here. You're just going to get a weight penalty. It's going to be a little cheaper kind of a thing like that. And then making our way down here, there's a button that says Power Turbine. Power Turbine is going to be the piece that's doing the work here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that button. Now, the cool thing about your power turbine is they add this little bit to the end, which basically grabs all of the exhaust gases, which are moving at a really high velocity, and it runs a gearbox that, of course, we can connect things to. Now, one of the things you do well here is this is almost like a turbo shaft because of the fact that this is a free spinning turbine, which means it's going to be running at whatever the speed of, of whatever it can get up to. There's no mechanical connection between this particular turbine and the rest of the jet engine itself. That's a good thing because it gives us a little bit of flexibility and makes it so we're less likely to do damage to this thing as we're running it. Now, one of the things you need to notice here is you're going to see TPR. This is going to tell you how much of this turbine is going to suck energy out of everything coming out of this turbine here. Now, the key thing here is if I increase this number, I'm going to be extracting less torque and less power. If I decrease this number, it increases it. Since we're making a turboprop today, obviously we want to make this relatively small. Now, I'm looking at this right now here, and I'm saying this is a really, really big diameter really big but as you probably know from the thing we're going for here our actual diameter of the item that we're trying to basically steal off of here i believe is about 19 inches if i recall correctly yeah about 48 centimeters so that's actually really close to what we need so what we're going to do is we're just going to come up here and just dial it in as 48 centimeters keep it nice and simple grab the sucker and it's going to pull it up just a little bit realistically we're probably going to need a lot less than this and uh, you'll see what i mean now, is when it comes to compression, uh, this is basically going to be how we extract energy. On uh, Sort of a jet engine, it's just another air pump. All we're going to do is we're going to suck in a hair with some of the low pressure, going to jam it into the high pressure, and then we're going to put some fuel into it. It's going to make all sorts of gas expand. We're going to blow it out the back, and we're going to collect that with a bunch of turbine fans back here. Now, these pressure ratios are basically what we're going to be using for sucking the energy out of that process. And uh, that's something we'll optimize a little later on. Three and nine is a perfectly fine place to start. Our little tip mock is just referring to when we make best pressure. This, again, is one of those tweaky things we can do a little later. Combustor. This is an interesting little option, which is going to dictate how hot we let things get. Now, if we reduce this, uh, granted, we're going to make a much, much cheaper engine. We're going to be a little more fuel economy, too. And, of course, the downside to reducing that temperature as well is we're not going to produce as much power. Um, we don't know. Uh, we'd have to actually look it up. And, of course, the number here will not match the number there. So I'm going to leave it at 1,200. Idle throttle. That's probably fine. Power turbine. Hydraulic pump. We don't need a hydraulic pump. I'll take an alternator, though, and make it relatively low. So that is our actual turbine component. So now what we have to do is we have to put in a gearbox and actually make this thing work. Before we do that, though, we need to know what RPM this thing turns at. So to do that, we head over to the sim. All right, so here we are. Uh, right now, I'm going to take a look at our power turbine is producing 768 kilowatts at 18,000 RPM. This is uh, basically idle here. Now, if I increase this, you can see we're producing about 3,000 kilowatts at 20 thousand rpm um, keep in mind it's unloaded right now so uh, naturally once we put things onto it but the key thing here is this absurdly high number uh, this is a very 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 big number that we're gonna have to drop down from uh, one thing i've learned from experimenting by the way is you can actually eliminate one of these zeros see what i mean but the key thing here is we're producing um about 3500 horsepower which is a lot 
Uh, there's a lot of other things we need to know, observe here. Uh, one thing we'll probably see scrolling down is that our N1 is working pretty hard, and our N1 and N2 are basically perfectly matched right now. They're both producing basically, um, they're equal. Uh, we don't need to increase them. If these numbers were very low, it means we're trying to extract too much energy. Our pressure ratios are too high. If these numbers are very high, like Mach 1.1, it means we need to increase the pressure ratio to try to extract more out of it. It's also a relatively quiet engine, which doesn't happen very often. Fuel economy, not great, but keep in mind, we haven't done any of the propeller business on it. The key element, though, is we know our magical, terrifying RPM here. So now we can head back in here and put a propeller on the front of this thing. Now, we're producing way more thrust than we need to. Um, that, that's a lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, I could probably quarter the size of this thing. But keep in mind, once you start putting like gearboxes and propellers on it, there's going to be some mechanical losses, which is going to impact us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and grab myself uh, some different components. Uh, one thing you can do, by the way, if you want to have some fun. Oh, we can't do that in mind. We can do that with propeller engines. Is I'm going to go ahead and add. I'm going to go shut off symmetry here. I'm going to grab myself a gearbox. Toss it on the front. I like to adjust my little stuff here, see how close I can get it. That's kind of big. And keep in mind, I'm not actually blocking the air. It, 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 it doesn't matter. Most turbines are actually mounted backwards, but don't worry about those things. But we need to now mount a gigantic propeller to the front of this thing to suck all the energy out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stick this propeller on here. Uh, I man, it's a really nice shot that time. Uh, and of course, now we're going to sit here. And we need to figure out what this gear ratio is going to be. Now, if we are going to assume that we're going to be keeping that kind of power, this is going to be a very big propeller. This is probably going to be a three or four meter propeller. If I had to do a quick guesstimate, as a matter of fact, we could probably even go up to a five blader here. And we could probably also switch to a scimitar style blade, which is going to be a little different. Let me switch to scimitars. There we go. Oh, there we go. Nice chunky C-130 blades there. I like that. Nice constant cord. Ooh, lovely blades. So we're going to go ahead and uh, run some tests to see basically what this produces. My initial gear ratio here, I'm actually going to keep this at an absurd 10 to 1. So what I'm going to do is set my input to the PT-6, which is accurate, and I'm going to go to my propeller blade here, which I'm telling you is way too small already. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure the power source to this is my gearbox. And uh, let's go do some quick runs. All right. So as I can see here, uh, we're looking at um, deafening. So propellers moving 1800 right now, which that doesn't surprise me at all. It's, it's going to choke down in a second. And it's just going to basically club this whole propeller. Uh, we're at 21% power here. I can see that I'm producing still about 800 kilowatts. And notice how much power got sucked down, by the way. So there we go. So you can see here, like remember I mentioned a minute ago, that whole 10 to 1 thing. There's your 10 to 1 right there. So let's see what we got here. So um, we have our power turbines producing about 3,000 kilowatts. And uh, we have a gearbox here, which is reducing the incoming by 10. So input's coming in at 20,000. Check. Our output's coming at about 2,000. Check. And I can see that my propeller here is uh, moving at about 0.50. So we actually have a really good propeller. We kind of got lucky there. Um, the problem is um, we're not doing much work here. Uh, we actually can take a look here at our pitch here. We're about 2.13. So we're really not utilizing the incoming power very much here. Actually, this is embarrassing because my exhaust from the PT-6 here is actually producing more thrust than the propeller mounted to the front of it. So we have a little bit of work to do here, and uh, we're going to have to optimize this propeller a lot. And that's uh, kind of where the magic sort of spark. One of the, you can press this. Goes <laughs> Good way to uh, test to make sure everything's working correctly. So let's head back and start optimizing that propeller. Wow, that's a lot of torque, too. Notice how this thing's just slowing down there. Cool, so let's get this propeller optimized. So we know this propeller right now needs to twist at about 2,000 RPM. And uh, we have a constant mock here, which is very, very typical that they use for turboprops. We also know, of course, that we have a bunch of aircraft that we can base our knowledge on. The big thing with props is they like to be big and they like to spin slow. Uh, that's generally kind of the rule. Now, one of the nice things is we do have a tool at our disposal. And again, we had a link to this on our propeller airplane, our reciprocating engine one. And we can take advantage of some of this information. So for me, uh, 2200 RPM sounds about right. Uh, we're going to keep it about there if we want to. A uh, velocity of the plane, we're going to be a lot faster. I'm expecting probably a 110, 120 kind of a thing like that. Diameter of the prop, oh, we got to go take a look real fast here. Our current diameter is 1.79. Let's make that a lot bigger. Let's go up to about two and a half meters. Uh, that's a pretty good size prop. Uh, that, that's huge, actually. And of course, we're going to have to come in here and fix all this. We'll have to set our target RPM, 2200. Yeah, I like that. So uh, what do we say? That's 2.0 now. Diameter is 2.5, actually. So we have to come all the way here. And again, you can see what it does to the shape of things. RPM's accurate. Uh, the pitch, um, you just use this as an offset. So you set this wherever you need to put it. Perfect. 
and we have our information. Now we know our angle desired is about five, our diameter prop is about 2.5. Via the plane, keep in mind this is optimized for this speed, which is 260 knots, it's quite a bit, but we can see our shape of our propeller profile quite nicely there. Now that we have that information, we'll just dial it on in. Uh, let's see here, this is gonna be 66. Our mid-range here is gonna be our 0.5 point, it's gonna be about 15, and our tip, of course, is gonna be oh, zero, which is actually pretty good. We can set this to one if we want. And you can see we get a nice little twist on that propeller, that's, uh, that's nice, that's real nice. So let's go bring it over to the tester and uh, see if things are a little bit better for us. All right, so we can see a couple things already. Uh, one thing that I see, which is uh, interesting enough, is the fact that our engine right now is um, at idle. Uh, we're actually producing uh, 1500 RPM as my idle RPM, which is incredibly high. The other thing we observe here is my idle thrust is just staggering. <laughs> uh, it's 11.5 kilonewtons, which is, uh, that's a staggering amount of idle thrust right there. And you can also see my pitch here is at two degrees, which means that obviously we're not sucking a lot of energy out of this propeller right now, but that's okay. We could of course increase or decrease our target RPM here to make that a little bit smoother if we wanted to, but that's okay. Other things we observe here is um, we're putting in about 298 and we're getting out, uh, what was it? About 216, it's fair, that's fair. So let's go ahead and bring it up to about 50%. And we can see we're not taking a very thick bite out of the air here. We can actually watch that our pitch has dropped, uh, which means our propeller is um, a little bit oversized. Over, I'm sorry, undersized. I always get this one backwards. The key thing here is um, this should be increasing slightly to basically catch the propeller a little bit, but uh, we won't know until we do this, of course. And you can see uh, we're putting in about 29.76 and we're getting about 43. So uh, we're uh, not capturing a lot of energy right now. Uh, that's actually pretty disappointing. Our um, RPM, of course, is pretty good, but you're noticing our propeller is just too much. Uh, we're not able to achieve uh, what we need to do here. And uh, obviously, look at our pitch has not changed at all. Ideally, we want about five, six degrees in here, which means we need a thinner propeller or we need something that's basically going to be able to adjust this pitch a little bit for us. And also, that's, that's pretty embarrassing just how little work we're getting out of here. Also, we can see here that our net thrust out of the back is about 5.76 kilonewtons. Our net thrust out the front, and look at this, we're not even reaching our target RPM here, is about 20,000 kilonewtons. That's embarrassing. Uh, let's head back over to the hangar and I'll see what we can do about this. So that's that's rough. That's uh, that's pretty rough. Uh, that kind of thing does happen, though. And like I said, that's part of the fun. That's what we're here to kind of figure out. So our propeller blades are working real hard here. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to drag the uh, propeller blades down here and we'll go down to a four count. Uh, that's going to, of course, massively reduce the amount of um, power that we're going to be extracting. So let's go ahead and uh, run that back into the sim. And we can see very clearly. Now, one thing I have to remind everybody here is the fact that this propeller is optimized for like 250 miles an hour knots. So because of that, it's not ever going to quite hit this point. But one of the things I'm noticing is we're able to extract a little less power from it, but our pitch is, we're just not getting enough. We're not twisting, we're not biting into the air enough. We're a very fine pitch, but we're never getting up to our target RPM here. So that means our propeller, again, is uh, just sucking too much energy out of it. So we're going to have to reduce that even more. Now, one of the strategies you can use at this point, of course, too, is we can just decrease the cord of the propeller blade. Now, when we decrease the cord, of course, uh, you can see it makes the propeller quite a bit thinner. So our airfoils have actually gotten a little bit smaller. So now, of course, if we go test it, we receive disappointing results. Now, one of the interesting things is, and you know, this is one of those little things I neglected to observe, is the fact that my engine here only likes to produce um, peak everything at about 20,000 RPM. But unfortunately, we never quite get there. So my cure ratio actually is partly to blame for this complication. Now, of course, right now we're at 22, uh, so basically uh, 20 divided by 10, you know, you're basically getting two. So the downside here is we're never quite hitting that point where the propeller blade really starts to bite into the air. And that's kind of one of those uh, sort of nasty little things we have to watch out for. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset this component here, but I'm gonna change my gear ratio here. I'm actually gonna go up to an 11 to one gear ratio. And what that's gonna do for us, of course, is that because we're going to be spinning the engine faster, is it's going to basically enable, actually, I've got that backwards. Let's go to a nine to one, which is basically going to make this propeller blade spin faster, which is going to give this an engine that's gonna be running a little bit slower as well. And now we're getting somewhere. Uh, what you'll notice here is our propeller blade is now turning at the desired RPM, more or less. So we're about 2200 RPM here, which is pretty close. You can see it's just a little tiny bit off here. The other thing you're noticing is we're extracting a lot more power out of this than we were before. We we're only doing about half. Now, if I go down to my engine itself on my PT6, 
which we'll probably observe here is um, still producing quite a bit. Uh, we have a lot of energy we can still sap out of this thing. But what you'll probably observe here is my ratio of RPM to uh, we're getting a target here. So we're definitely getting better. The other thing you'll note here is my pitch is starting to climb towards about five, uh, which is actually definitely a good spot. That's going to be pretty solid. And you can see our power is fluctuating just a little bit, which isn't too unusual. We're also not overheating anything, which is uh, very, very helpful here. And you can see that our RPMs are basically perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choke this just a little bit more by reducing the gear ratio again. Now we're getting close. You'll observe here that um, because I dropped to an eight to one gear ratio, that my thrust now is uh, stayed about the same. But notice I'm extracting about 1800 kilowatts out of this sucker. But a new problem has presented itself. And that's the fact that my pitch on my propeller has actually jacked itself all the way to 25 degrees, desperately trying to pull power out of this. I know we're starting to get close now. This is, uh, like I said, welcome to the iterative design process. So we'll head back to the hangar again, and uh, we know we're getting close. Uh, we know for a fact that our blades here, we can actually probably go back up to a five blader. We could probably also increase the blade cord a little bit here, because I think we've just about extracted it. Uh, the other thing we know is, of course, is our gear ratio is getting very close to the point where we're extracting as much power as we can. One of the things that bums me out here is we don't get to see the power curve of the turboprop. So all of our efforts to basically suck all this power out, you know, we've basically been over revving it the whole time. And uh, that's again, part of the fun. Now, if you take a look here, uh, we're sitting at 2200 RPM. We're extracting, whoa, 2500 kilowatts out of it. But our pitch is still 25 degrees, which means we're, we're still wasting energy here. On my engine on the flip side, if you take a look at it, we've actually reduced my RPM substantially. But since we don't know the torque, we're basically using the think system here to kind of find the sweet peak power point here. Notice, by the way, my power hasn't really changed that much. It's just, you know, different torque, different power. But um, what I can see here is my propeller is, you can tell it's, it's undersized. Uh, this number would be substantially lower. But the cool thing here is, look at how much thrust I'm up to here. I'm about 25,000 thrust. Now, keep in mind earlier, we were a heck of a lot less thrust than that. So we're definitely starting to get close here. So let's grab our propeller one more time. And uh, this time what we'll do is, of course, we can go up to a six blade, uh, which makes a pretty substantial difference there. That's pretty, that, that's quite a propeller. It's also a very, very heavy propeller. And then what we'll do is we'll increase our blade cord just a little bit, make a slightly thicker blade here. And uh, that'll work pretty well for us. Let's go try it out. And we can see here we're actually getting very close. Um, incoming power is about 2976. Outgoing power is about, as we can see very closely here, about 2586. Uh, without knowing the actual losses, we are very close to optimum here. And, uh, again, remember, this is at non-moving. We'd have to actually take this thing, and what we'd have to do is we'd have to shove it on the front of something, go up to about 150 meters per second to actually check it. But what you can see here is we are so close, but my propeller pitch is still very, very high. And again, we want to try to get this to about five degrees. A couple of things we can do here. We can obviously run this a little quicker, but the downside here is if you look at my Mach Max right now, it's 0.7. Um, this is basically the sweet spot. If this gets any higher, we're not going to be able to get any high airspeed once we do start climbing and stuff like that. It's uh, going to be messy in that sort of regard. So we need to extract a little bit more power out of this thing. And again, if we increase the diameter a little bit, that's going to increase our Mach. Uh, obviously, if we throw into the propeller blade on this, we're going to get a little more too. Our cord is uh, looking pretty big as it begins. Um, twisting is not going to do us much good here. Uh, we can, of course, change the range. But like we said, we know we're still a little high as far as that goes. So, of course, one thing we could do is we could try to extract a little more speed out of this thing but uh, for me like i said our propeller blades just needs a little tiny bit more to get a little bit more out of it so with blade lengths um very tempted to increase this i'm actually just gonna increase the cord Ugh, that looks ugly i don't want to do that kind of a thing like that it's just messy we can of course increase our twist a little bit too which will suck more energy out of it by default or we could try increasing our gear ratio a little bit like we could drop this to seven let's see what happens now if you see here um what we've achieved by changing the gear ratio is we're definitely getting closer to peak power here and the reason I know that is we're only 200 kilowatts off between our power turbine and this, and our thrust is absolutely the highest it's ever been here. But like I said, our pitch is still pretty high. That's an acceptable pitch. Uh, we could definitely keep it that way, or we could spend another 25 minutes basically fitting with it, trying to get it even closer to what we want it to be. But the key thing here is we're producing pretty good amount of power, but we're also ex consuming quite a bit of power. Now, one of the great things about turboprops here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down to a little bit more quiet so i can hear myself think here is the fact we're actually producing thrust out the back of the turbine and we're producing thrust from the propeller itself i want to combine these two of course together 
you can see we have, uh, let's see, about 50,000, uh, 46. It's probably going to go up a little bit as we go down the runway here, but 40,000 looks pretty good, which isn't too, too bad. You saw we got a little bit of peak there as my uh, mock came up. Ah, uh, very tempted to do a mock chain. Oh, that's such a bad thing. I shouldn't do it. Let's do it. But uh, one of the things you can see here is when we add our 35 plus our 6, uh, that gets us a pretty darn good Rudy Tooty uh, kind of uh, performance there. So the last thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, change our uh, little propeller here. We'll go back to this one. We're going to go to constant mock this time, and uh, we're going to put this and be incredibly dangerous. And uh, we're going to say our mock response, or we're going to set this to uh, 75 here. And uh, that's uh, interesting. I hope that's 0.75. Otherwise, we're going to be very, very disappointed when this thing takes off on us. That is glorious. Look at that. Pitch is acceptable on my mock. Mac is about 0.72. Our thrust is about 0.37. And we're getting combined between these two together. We're doing fantastic. So as you can see, uh, the turboprop is an excellent tool. Our fuel economy here is actually pretty good for the amount of thrust that we're getting. Now, I know you're probably sitting there and going, okay, well, hot shots. Um, so obviously, you spent all this time getting the gearbox right. You spent all this time, by the way, and notice how close our powers are to be equal. We could actually probably increase the gearbox ratio a tiny bit more and get a little tiny bit more out of it. But um, what you're probably saying now is, now if I just took this jet engine on its own, would you produce the same amount of thrust as this produces? Well, let's get a number first and I'll show you the downside here. It's about 37 plus a six, a 37 and six, uh, what do we call that, about 43? So let's uh, return back to the hangar. Let's uh, take all this hard work that we did here. I can imagine just how challenging this is. This is a lot easier, by the way, with a taller propeller. That's uh, generally the simplest way to do a lot of these things. Let's go ahead and get rid of those two. Let's take this jet engine. Let's take off the power turbine, leave it exactly as it is, and go test it. And as you can see, at peak thrust, we produce 14.87 kilonewtons. Isn't that awesome? And it's just an awesome demonstration of the level of detail that the folks who developed Flyout actually put together here. And it's just awesome that with just a little bit of engineering, obviously I, there's a little bit of editing going on there, you have the ability to really capture the maximum amount of energy out of something that's relatively small that you can use and still get pretty good economy out of it. Other than that, enjoy.